Welcome my little friends and devils. This is the right place to stay up late watching anything that is scary and mysterious and just downright unearthly. We all love to feel the fear of anxiety rushing through us through that little blue screen. I'm sure there's a reason why you love the mysterious. But if you thought this was going to be a place to share some stories about Care Bears and Kumbaya, then you're not in the right place. Blue now. Now get yourself cozied up to your little uh, coffin, or I mean cushion, and pull up a glass of that red drink that you have there. Or is that wine? I sure hope so, unless you're 21, I'm guessing that it's just Kool-Aid. What's that? You feel a cold breeze coming into your room, but you don't have any windows open? Maybe it's just a vent, or maybe it's just a ghost. <laughs> I'm just kidding again. I scoured through the darkest places of the internet into this story, and I believe it should be retold. So let's get more in a serious tone and put the jokes aside. We've all heard of a ghost story at least once in our lives. And some of these ghost stories have a tint of truth between them. And no, I'm not arguing that ghost stories are true or trying to convince you of something that you may have your own opinion on. But what I am saying is that what I found is that ghost stories reveal a part of history that has been thought of been lost for a while. Colorado has a few haunted spots, but one of them is that of Riverdale Road. Now, Riverdale Road is considered, is located in Thornton, Colorado. It's just a bit north of Denver. People have come by to visit this road and try to get a scare for themselves. Now, Riverdale Road is a winding 11 mile road that connects from Brighton and Thornton and is still a little bit on the outskirts of town. Most of the stories regarding Riverdale are urban legends, and so remember that some of these urban legends may differentiate depending on who you ask and who you talk to. You may have even grown up with your own variation of this story. So let's start with the first lore, the gates of hell. It's no longer there, but let's get into it. It's been said that it used to be a gate of hell, and it was a rusty iron. It's been said that a man went insane, and set the home aflame with his family inside. The family perished in the fire and the man was never seen again. So how much of this is true? Well, looking into the Denver Library or the history.denverlibrary.org, they found that what once stood there was actually the house that was called the David Wolbert House. At around 1 a.m. on November 28th, 1975, a home located at 9190 Riverdale Road became engulfed in flames. The two-story brick home was believed to have been built in the 1860s and was severely damaged. Using sources from the Denver Post, the site mentions that in May of 1975, when the chicken house burned down, that's what it was also called, the fire department claimed that, oh, the fire department came and dis extinguished the fire and put it in a report to the county health and authorities stating that the house was a fire hazard and a danger to the community. Big yikes, right? I mean, having your house burned down and then having the fire department say, oh, well, it was already a fire hazard to begin with. I mean, I wonder what that must have felt like. The health department ordered the owner to dismiss the tenants and when they moved, and when they moved out, heavily vandalism started. The only newspaper report of the fire on Denver 4 was in 1975. The Denver Post does not allude to any suspicion of arson. The property has been purchased by a development firm at the time. Instead of the place being restored, they ended up making it into a park called Pelican Ponds. So now it's an open space. And very recently they finished construction, so it's a little playground and everything like that. So here's where I'm gonna to touch very briefly on the folklore that can be found about Riverdale Road, is the bloody handprints that are seen on signs, native lore around shape-shifting, the hitchhiking lady and the lady in white, and also there is a, a person that runs a ghost runner or something like that, and then also a haunted Camaro. Why I'm going to bring up the haunted Camaro and dive a little bit deeper is that because I really is the fact that I think that the Heidi McGuire case kind of might be a symbolism of that lore. I don't know, I couldn't find further into it, but if you guys have more information on it, or if you grew up in Thornton and you think you have a hint of truth here or a link where I could talk more about this lore, if it's true or not, let me know in the comment section. But I'm gonna continue on with the Heidi McGuire case. So on December 23rd of 1987, a girl by the name Heidi McGuire would go missing. And she was actually very young too. She was last seen at the Circle K store that was located in 2001 Corona Parkway. She was last seen giving a regular or a customer a ride in her 1978 Chevrolet Mazda. Now I tried to do more digging and I couldn't find anything online 
which is really sad. So I had to write to the, to the Denver Public Library. At first they were like, well, we don't have anything, but then they ended up sending me some newspaper clippings. So here's what I found out about these newspaper clippings. I found that Heidi had been missing for about eight weeks. And in between the time they had used a psychic medium. The psychic medium had been working with both the authorities and the family. As you can see in this screenshot, the authorities did not find anything um, or did not find the psychic medium's information very useful. They did say that she kept bringing up Louisville. So I, you know, that's all I could find with that. And too bad I don't know who the psychic medium is because I would love to talk to this person and just ask more questions around this case. So again, if anyone has any information on this, please let me know in the comment section. I really couldn't find anything online. And this is all I was able to gather from the Denver library. So another thing that I really wanted to talk about is the guy that she was last seen with. Because to me, it seems kind of sus that they didn't explain why this person was not ruled or yeah, they didn't really go into a lot more information on why this guy was not a suspect and why they were ruled out as just the last person seen. So I read that the officer had spoken to the guy she was last seen with. It turns out that she came into this person's house to get a drink of water and then left. Like, don't you find that kind of bizarre? Like why? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I just need more information. I don't know. But let me know what you guys think. When inspecting the car, they found that there was a flat tire and the undercarriage of the car was damaged but no indication that she was met with foul play in the car. Here's the interesting thing. The day that she was called by her brother that she was missing, the officer said that the nearby residents had seen her car in the morning of December 24th. And, but yet what was even, what's even more interesting, if I read this correctly, is that her brother had reported her missing on the day, on that same day, because she didn't show up to work at 6 a.m. Well, then on February 14th of 1988, her body was found between 89th Avenue and Riverdale Road. An autopsy revealed that she was struck in the head with a blunt object. Meanwhile, her car would be found between 112th and Riverdale Road in a ditch. So I have so many questions like, why was the last person she was seen with not a suspect? Also, her car was at her brother's, but he reported her missing? if I'm reading this correctly. And lastly, I'll definitely make another video with the further legends of Riverdale Road if you guys find this to be an interesting video and wanna learn more about it. So let's go back to the lore, right? So as I mentioned earlier, was the phantom car. It's been said that there is a phantom car that haunts people and drive people off the road on Riverdale Road. The car has been reported to be like around a 1970s Camaro. Heidi drove a 1978 Chevrolet Mazda. Maybe over time it evolved and morphed into that. Who knows? So like I said, y'all who are car fans might, you know, hate me for this, but could it be that these cars could be similar? Who knows? But if one of you have more information on this lore, I know I said it a few different times, please reach out to me. I would love to follow up with you and learn more about this, but this is all I could find. But thank you for your time. Let me know if you want to hear more about Riverdale Road and until next time.